even though manufacturing only makes up about 9% of all jobs, it is really critical to the economic health of the country, really for four major reasons. It makes outsized contributions to providing high-wage jobs, to innovation, to the potential for rebalancing our trade with other countries, and to environmental sustainability. So take high wages. Uh, manufacturing, on average, pays about 8.4% more than non-manufacturing for workers who are otherwise the same. So that's controlling for all the other things that influence wages, all the individual demographic characteristics, all the characteristics of jobs, their locations, occupations, unionization, all those things are taken into account and there's still over an 8% gap between wages in manufacturing and wages elsewhere. Um, innovation. Manufacturing accounts for more than two-thirds of the company performed R&D in this country. And it's also the most important source of some of the harder to measure gains in productivity that come from um, uh, incremental innovation and process innovation. And those two things uh, shouldn't be undersold. Those two things are extremely important contributors to innovation, uh, just at, at least as much as formal R&D. Uh, look at trade. Well, we have a huge trade deficit in this country, and we have a huge trade deficit in manufacturing. But manufacturing accounts for almost two-thirds of all U.S. trade, imports and exports combined. So even though we do have a huge trade deficit in manufacturing, manufacturing has got to be a huge part of the solution to our trade deficit problem. And finally, environmental sustainability. Manufacturing makes a disproportionate uh, contribution to environmental benefit, uh, not just in making the components that are needed for wind turbines and solar panels, which are very high visibility, but also in making all the products that are needed to retrofit homes, offices, and factories for energy efficiency. Yeah, we're just starting to see uh, companies start to reconsider the costs and benefits of offshoring. Uh, part of that is because the direct labor costs, uh, which were the main benefit of offshoring in the first place, are rising, particularly in China, which was a huge target destination of offshoring in manufacturing. Wages are going up faster in China than productivity is. And while the, ch the value of the Chinese yuan is not going up nearly uh, as fast as it should be, and China's continuing to manipulate its currency, and that's a big problem for U.S. manufacturing, um, it has gone up a slight bit, um, so at least it's moved a little in the right direction. Uh, also, transportation costs are going up, and companies, uh, when they made initial offshore decisions, didn't necessarily uh, take that into account. Uh, other things they didn't take into account were the costs of coordinating between the engineers who do R&D in this country and the production facilities in China. Uh, particularly in high-tech manufacturing industries, um, it's hard to have the two be so far apart. The coordination costs are just too great. In general, uh, it's difficult to manage a far-flung global supply chain, and many big companies didn't realize that when they first made offshoring decisions. That, for example, was one of the reasons behind the delays in the production of the Boeing 787. And I think Boeing is now uh, realizing that there were costs as well as benefits to having a far-flung uh, global supply chain. There are some companies and some plants that are better than others. Some companies and plants use what we call a high road formula. Uh, they rely on highly paid, highly trained, skilled workers um, who solve problems and figure out ways to make products better, thereby producing high wages for workers and profits for the owners of the company. Other companies and other plants within companies rely on more what we call a low road formula. 
they are looking for the lowest possible labor costs, uh, regardless of productivity and quality. And those two have very, very different implications for workers and for productivity. And it is much better for the national economy as a whole if more companies and more plants rely on the high road formula. When we talk about policies to retain or expand the number of manufacturing jobs, at least we're not um, flying in the face of bigger international trends. Um, we're moving in the same direction as those trends. But if we sit back and say, we're regaining manufacturing jobs all as well, um, then we're not going to realize the full potential of US manufacturing. The manufacturing job gains that we've had in the last two years, welcome as they are, are really just a trickle compared to all the manufacturing jobs that we lost in the previous decade. We lost about six million manufacturing jobs uh, between the beginning of 2000 and the end of 2009. Since the end of 2009, we've only regained about 300,000 manufacturing jobs, or maybe a little bit more. Um, at that rate, it will take uh, another two decades or more just to get back to the number of manufacturing jobs that we had uh, at the turn of the century. So we clearly have to do better than that if we're going to have a robust uh, manufacturing base in this country.